Uh, so the government has pledged to make the UK the safest place to be online, and today the regulator Ofcom has outlined proposals as to how they will police the new online harms bill, which promises to protect children from harmful material on social media sites, messaging and servicing apps. Ian Russell has long campaigned to tighten the regulations around uh, what's online after his daughter Molly took her own life after viewing dangerous content. We're going to be speaking to Ian about the proposals in just a minute. First, though, here's a reminder of Molly's story. Molly Russell appeared to be a happy, carefree teenager with a passion for performing arts. But then, at just 14 years old, she took her own life. An inquest found that Molly suffered the negative effects of online content, bombarded with images of suicide and self-harm material on social media websites. Her father, Ian, has campaigned tirelessly since her death, ramping up the pressure on social media companies who will now face responsibility for removing illegal content, such as bullying, self-harm, revenge porn and terrorism. The new online harms law means companies in breach can be fined up to 10% of their global profits by Ofcom, who can also block access within the UK. Now Ian's hope is that no other families will endure the tragedy that his has endured and that these new proposals will mean government will deliver its pledge to make the UK the safest place in the world to be online. We're joined now by Molly's dad, Ian, and alongside him, the chief executive of Ofcom, Dame Melanie Dawes. Thank you both Morning. for coming in. Ian, just shocking what your daughter saw online. Do you think the new law changes that significantly so that any other 14-year-old girl will now not be able to see the dark images that affected Molly so deeply? I think the new law has to change that. And if it fails in some way to do so, it will have failed. Mm. Um, only last week, I, I had another look online yeah. and I found easily, within a minute, I found content that was the same, maybe not exactly the same, but very similar to the content Molly had seen uh, six years ago, when she was looking at six years ago. Um, and it's there and easily available now. And Can so you that, describe it? I mean, in a I way that I can't that's... describe it because it's too it's too it's too harmful. But it, it's content that um, talks about self harm, mm. talks about suicide, and encourages in people. This is what we've learnt about um, from Molly's death. She had this. She looked like an ordinary, lovely, fantastic yeah. girl, but to herself, there was a sense of hopelessness, a sense of worthlessness, and she thought. She said in some notes that she left for us, she thought that she was a burden to us and that we would be better off without her. And all those feelings were encouraged by what she saw online. And so the test for this new act is it must protect children by making that content so much harder for them to find. And the systems that the companies use, the algorithmic systems that recommend more and more of that content, yeah. have to be... Have to be um, stopped as well. Ian, I wonder how it was for you six years after you tragically lost your daughter when you did a simple search and those images still came up so quickly, so easily, without even having to try very hard. It, it's, it, it sadly wasn't a shock mm. for me, but, but basically the, the, the platforms have taken steps to do things. They have made their, their platforms safer. Um, when Molly's story first broke in 2019, Instagram, for example, said it would no longer allow graphic self-harm content. So that's a step in the in the in the right direction. Must be, must be. Um, um, you know, that's a, that's fantastic. We must say that's good. Um, but whatever they're doing, it's obviously ineffective because that content's still there. I had a quick look this morning as well, um, and on Instagram, if you put in a word that is associated with this issue you immediately get directed to a helpline. I think in this case it might have been Samaritans. I put in um, a, a, another word on Twitter, on X, within a couple of pictures I had photographs of self-harm. I mean, shocking. I didn't want to go any further. Mm -hmm. So, Dame Melanie Dawes, uh, some people are, are working on this, mm -hmm. others aren't. Mm. That's exactly right, Susanna, and I think that's why we need regulation. 
and the UK's gone further than any other country, actually, and as Ofcom, we've come straight out today with our first blueprint for what we think the industry needs to do. But what you've just said is exactly the problem. We do have some companies that are taking some steps, but there are many that are not taking really any at all. Are you pointing your finger at X and Elon Musk? I'm not pointing my finger at anyone today. I'm calling on the industry to look carefully at what we're proposing. It's a set of very practical proposals. It's things like not allowing under-18s to be contacted randomly by stranger adults that they don't mm. know. It's about making sure that if you're verifying accounts, you do so properly, because otherwise you just, you're just you opening your doors to fraud on your platform. When does this come so in? That kind when of does age verification come in? Well, on age verification, we'll be coming out actually in early December with really concrete proposals on that. It's a crucial part of the setup. We've been doing loads of research here. I'm afraid to say that quite a lot of other countries have tried on this and got embroiled in legal battles, but we are ahead of the curve on this in the UK now. And, that's and it's the central plank of what needs to be done legal, properly. Sorry, legal battles regarding the veracity of the age verification, because yeah. Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, our team have just done this this morning. Mm -hmm. You just have to put an input, a date of birth in, mm -hmm. yeah. and you get clearance. And as long as you are, you say you're over the age that you need to be to use those sites, they'll accept it. There's no sort of facial recognition with a passport. There's no mm -hmm. driving license. Of course, if you're a child, you don't mm -hmm. have that. But there's no mm -hmm. confirmation from a parent to say, yes, we are allowing them to use this. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? You're trying to get more strict measures in terms of proving age? Yes, absolutely. We know that a third of 8 to 17-year-olds have a user age on social media that is 18 plus. So they're being treated as an adult. And that's got to change. How? Um, How well, change there that? are new technologies now that mm. are coming in. So this is what we'll be setting out. It's not part of what we've done today, mm. but it's our next phase, because there's a lot in this new set of laws. Mm. Um, and, you know, we've got 1,500 pages out today, but that's what comes next. And there are new, there's new tech, which means when you go on in a way that preserves your privacy, you can check quickly if you're 18 plus, and then the platform can treat you accordingly, the app can treat you accordingly. <laughs> Ian, uh, one of the issues appears to be the algorithm. It's this... It's fine if you're looking for positive stuff. If you're looking for pictures of cats, for instance, you'll be fed more pictures of cats and life can only get better. If you're looking for dark material or you're feeling low, you get fed more pictures. I mean, there was a point when I was on TikTok and I could see people struggling and I kind of thought, maybe if I send a positive message, mm. that'll help. The trouble was I got sent more and more of this material because of the algorithm. It started to affect my mood mm. and I felt absolutely fine. Yeah. But I thought, my goodness, if I feel fine and I start feeling low, what if you feel low and you start getting fed more and more of this material? And you know that. You know that that's part of the problem. Have you seen social media companies say, we're going to fix the algorithm? We're not going to let people who are looking for dark stuff get swamped with it. Um, social me media companies are very good at sounding uh, confident and, and, and saying they're going to change things, but as I said earlier, they, there seems to be too little change and that horrible content is still there, which is why it's really important. It, it's, it, I'm really pleased to be sitting here next yeah. to the, the boss of Ofcom um, because it really is. This is the next stage. We've, we've spent five years of parliamentary debate getting to this stage, that's too long. Um, and the baton has well and truly be passed to Ofcom now. But they, I, I just really urge that you, you move the fastest speed possible. The, 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 the transition period um, the government has promised would be uh, a maximum of 18 months. But looking at your roadmap, and I understand why you have to do it carefully, mm -hmm. but looking at the roadmap, I think it's taking too long. Yeah. Um, and I think... You have to be as bold as a regulator can ever be and move as mm. fast as you can because mm. that content is still there. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's not just one story. It's not just Molly's story. I've met far too many families yeah. who are so similarly affected. This is affecting, in fact, most children. Um, a Samaritan survey said most children, by the time they're uh, 14... 75% of children have seen harmful content online. This is affecting most young people mm. in our world today, so we have to move fast to, mm. to do something about it. Emily, there'll be parents watching this morning who have teenage children and, or young teenage children who will mm. be pestered saying, I want to have an Instagram account, mm. I want to have a Snapchat, I want to have TikTok. Mm. What's your advice to them in terms of trying to 
enable the child to feel like they're part of that, and that's an important thing. I had exactly this with one of my, my sons who was desperate mm. to get these things. He felt like he was missing out because he didn't have it, but also protecting them from the things that Ian's talking about that are so, so harmful. Yeah. Well, look, it is really difficult for parents, I think, because, you know, most parents, even in their 30s, just haven't grown up in the world that their kids are now living in. So uh, when I talk to kids about this, what they say they want from their parents and their teachers is not to be blamed when things go wrong, not to be stopped from being on social media, provided they're old enough, but to be supported through this. And they want to talk to their families about it, actually. So that's what I would, try, I would say to parents, try and open it up, because right now, the young people I speak to just feel quite alone, frankly. They don't feel that the social media companies are doing enough. Uh, they do have now a regulator that is determined to represent them much, much better than they have been before. But they need the other people in their lives to be alongside them too. Even if it looks all a bit kind of scary sometimes, mm. try and get immersed in it a bit, try and understand that world, because it is the one that our children are growing up in. I fully understand the world, and I think the, the onus has to be on the social media companies. They it are does. feeding our children yep. utter awfulness. Mm. I, I, I honestly, I think sometimes as a parent, you feel absolutely powerful. Yeah. You're in the face of a tsunami of this stuff. I think mm -hmm. it's, you know, t talking to your children is one thing. You can't help what they look at mm -hmm. when they're in their rooms on their own or even when they're right in front of you. And also this week, if you think of um, uh, another story that's been in the news, another, the latest Facebook whistleblower, um, Artura um, Behar. He's, he's, he's worked at Facebook yeah. and he's just come forward and, and given evidence to Congress in the US about his attempts within the company to try and mm. make them improve mm. and how the, the senior management uh, within that company seemed mm. not to answer his emails and, yeah. and not to respond. Just, resistance. Yeah. That yeah. change has to happen within the company. Yes. It's a change yeah. of culture yeah. that has to happen. Yeah. I completely agree with that, Ian. Fundamentally, we've not had any regulation until now. Mm -hmm. That does change today. We've set out our expectations as the regulator, and above all, we want safety to be prioritised, particularly for our children, yeah. and not just the commercial bottom line. Yeah, well, all power to your elbow, because you've got some giants to yeah. fight, haven't you? Thank you. We have, but I've got some great people, and be under no illusions, we are ready to make a mm -hmm. difference here. Ian, your work on this uh, has been transformational. I, I share your frustration that it's not happening quickly enough, but honestly, it everything that you can do to stop our children seeing the kind of stuff that, that, that is still available, you know, thank you for everything that you're doing. Well, thank, thank you. you both. Mm. Uh, if you've been affected by any of the issues we've been discussing, you can find advice and support on the website, itv.com forward slash helplines.